Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey family, welcome again to Hill City Online tonight. We are so excited that you join us again and that you took some time out to just and enjoy the fellowship with us online. Can you believe a week went by so quickly? We're back here again. It felt like yesterday that we had Hill City Online and we're back here again Sunday evening about to start a new week. And what better way to start a new week than by being in the presence of God and online in the same room with all the people that you love and fellowship with at Hill City. And if you're visiting with us today or your friends or family of people who belong to this amazing youth ministry, welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, you just let us know in the comments where you're watching from if you if it's the first time you're joining let us know say hi pop your name in there do whatever you have to do but just let us know that you are in the room tonight we are so excited for what god is in store for us this evening on hill city online we have a phenomenal speaker which i'll tell you about a little bit more later on but tonight let's just invite the holy ghost to join us and, and meet with us in our various rooms and in our various homes so that we can feel and encounter the presence of God right where we are. So let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight that we can be found in your presence. Dear God, we thank you that there is no distance and no limitations to where you will meet with us. And so today, dear God, right in the homes of our people, we pray that your presence will be there. That where your presence is, dear God, there is fullness of joy. We pray that the peace of God will be with them in their homes. The love of God and the joy of God will be their portion tonight. As we gather around your word tonight, as we gather around uh, songs of worship, we pray that you would meet us at the very point of our need. Bless those who are tuning in tonight, those who are joining after 
after this broadcast is ended bless them dear god whatever they may need from you we pray that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly far more than we could ask or think that this week will be a week of miracles a, a week of answered prayer in jesus name amen and amen we're about to go over to a song but just before we do that i want to remind you that this coming uh saturday the first of august zoom in with clayton rose will be uh flighted live on facebook on my personal page clayton rose but more information will be posted this week on our social media pages please do join in we have an, a phenomenal guest and a, and a very interesting topic that we will be discussing on zoom in with clayton rose this saturday at 5 p.m on facebook live but let's go over to the song and immediately after that i'll be back to introduce our speaker for tonight here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here rearranging destinies I worship you I worship you you are here Turning lives around I worship you I worship you You are here Turning lives around I worship you I worship you Waymaker Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every life, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you are here, you're turning life around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. You're mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We make oh, We make miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness of my God. That is who you are. We make it now. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. Oh my God, that is who. That is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who. Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I feel it, you're working. Even when I can see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop it even when I even when I see it you work
So excited to introduce our speaker for tonight, Pastor Ryan Harmon, all the way from Ontario, Canada. He is married to Jenna Harmon, and together they have two beautiful little boys, Moses and Shepherd. They are the youth pastors and young adult pastors of Lake Mount Worship Center, and they have a phenomenal youth ministry happening over there. I had the privilege of seeing them in action when I was over there in Canada, and they have a beautiful building, a beautiful church, and a beautiful ministry. They are doing phenomenal work in, in the area that God has called them in Canada. But tonight, Pastor Ryan Harmon is going to preach a powerful, relevant word that will bless us, encourage us, but also challenge us to be better believers and in our walk with Christ. Won't you put to your hands together in the comments, put fire emojis, whatever you have to do, but let's welcome Pastor Ryan Harmon as he ministers the Word of God. Hey everybody, good to be with you tonight. Uh, obviously not with you, but I'm kind of with you. Uh, from all the way over here in Grimsby, Ontario, it's me. Uh, Pastor Ryan Harmon, and I'm so honored to be in this space with you guys tonight. Um, I just want to extend some greetings really quickly from my church, Lake Mount Worship Center. Uh, my lead pastors, Pastor Matt and Lisa Tapley, they say hello, and uh, they actually can't wait to meet you guys. I've told them so many times, hey, let's go to South Africa. So maybe once all this COVID stuff's done, Lord willing, uh, we'll make that connection but greetings to you guys, Hill City. So good to uh, see you, be with you, all that stuff. Uh, upper Room, I miss you guys too. It was great being with you when we were in South Africa last. And uh, just wanted to extend a big shout out and hello to Apostle Vincent and Virginia Rhoda, or Rhoda, see, I've been working on my, my R's. Yeah, I'm, I'm Canadian, who am I kidding? And, and hello to Pastor Clayton and Cindy Rose, who are family for me but they're also friends and that's the best thing ever. Um, I just wanted to say that um, God has been so faithful, not just to our local church, but he's been so faithful to my wife, Jenna, who also says hello, and myself. Uh, over the past couple of months in the difficulty of COVID-19, we've actually welcomed in a, uh, a new addition to our family. So his name is Shepherd, Shepherd Ryan Jeffries. He's my namesake. Our second boy, we uh, welcomed him into the world on March 12th, and he's been the biggest blessing to us. God's been so faithful in so many different ways. And I've heard testimonies of friends and family all over the world that in the midst of this craziness, God is still moving and he's still working. And uh, I've got a word that I want to share to you guys tonight. And, and I'm hoping that as I proclaim the word of the Lord, that his faithfulness will be put on display that God will just bring things to the front of your mind, to the top of your heart, that you'll be able to say in a moment like tonight, man, God has been so faithful to me. And more than that, I also believe that as I proclaim the word of the Lord to you, that God is gonna help us to make sense of this world that we've been living in. And uh, the world's been crazy since we were born into it. We're born into a sinful world and there's a devil out there always wreaking havoc. But I know that 2020 has been difficult in a new way and on a new level. So tonight as I preach, I really believe that God is going to put his faithfulness on display and he's also going to give us the ability to um, understand the times and the seasons that we're living in. So won't you join with me right now and let's just pray and open our hearts to the Lord and to what he wants to say to us tonight. Heavenly Father, we take this moment right now in your presence and we welcome your Holy Spirit to come. We ask Jesus that, that you would begin to search our hearts like the psalmist prayed. That you would find if there's any wicked way in us. See if there's any bit of our heart that offends you, God, and help us to deal with those things tonight. We want to be a light shining bright at the top of a hill. We want to be those who could add salt to this world, that we could show the flavor and the true beauty of Christ in a hurting world. So tonight, Jesus, help us to see the truth that is found in your word. We ask that you would open the eyes of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I wanna to preach tonight from the book of 2 Kings. So if you turn in your Bible or on your YouVersion app, whatever you use to the book of 2 Kings, I wanna preach, uh, I don't wanna teach, I wanna preach um, from the book of 2 Kings in chapter six. We're gonna read the story of Elisha. Elisha and his servant. And we're going to see how the Lord pulled through, how he showed up 
in a dire circumstance for them. And while you're going there, I want to proclaim a verse, the words of Jesus from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, 33. It says this, These things I've spoken to you, Jesus says, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation or trouble, but take courage, I have overcome the world. As we look to 2 Kings 6, I want the backdrop of everything that we read about tonight to be the sovereignty of our Lord. I already said he's faithful, but God is also sovereign over everything that you're going through in life right now, over every need you have, over every problem that has come your way. I want to declare over your life and over everyone that will eventually watch this stream that God is sovereign. Well, how sovereign? So sovereign that some 2,000 years ago, Jesus proclaimed in the midst of his disciples that in this world, you will have tribulation. You'll have trouble. The picture like being on an airplane, you'll have turbulence. Things are going to get shaken. The Bible says that what can be shaken will be shaken, but we are a part of an unshakable kingdom. Jesus called it 2,000 years ago. It's going to be rough in this world. It's going to be a little bumpy, but take heart. He's overcome the world and he's given us peace. So with the faithfulness and the sovereignty of God in full view, let's read 2 Kings chapter 6 and allow the Lord to speak to us tonight. I'm going to start in verse 10. It says this, time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded them, Tell me, which one of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words that you speak in your bedroom. I want to give some context to this really quick. The king of Aram, an enemy nation of Israel, was seeking to attack the people of God. And Every time he tried to position himself to overtake Israel, Elisha, who was a prophet, had a relationship with God where he would hear God speak and then he would warn Israel to get out of the way. So Aram would attack here, but Israel would have already been moved. Aram would have set up to attack them here, but Israel would have already subverted them and gone somewhere else. You could see how frustrating this would be for the king of Aram. So his officials tell the king of Aram, hey, none of us are leaking out information, but Elisha, he's not a spy, he's a prophet, and God's speaking to him. So he says this, go find out where he is, so that I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I wish somebody would just circle that or underline it tonight. That's a word for you. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Just pretend for a moment that you've never heard this story before. I mean, I'm, I'm totally guilty of this. I, I open the Bible and, and I just, I've read it so many times or I've seen that scripture, you know, X amount of times that it's taken the power away for me. But, but look at this scripture with new eyes tonight. You see, this actually happened. And there's Christians out there that will tell you, you know, it was just allegory. It's just fiction. It's trying to explain to you some sort of a, a truth about God. It wasn't actually real though. Well, let me tell you this, that you can't cherry pick the Bible. You can't just take the scriptures you like and the ones that make you feel cuddly and cozy and then disregard the ones that you don't quite understand. But read the scripture with fresh eyes, knowing that if some of the Bible's true, all of it is true. This really happened. A servant goes outside of his house just to have his morning coffee or, or morning tea. And when he opens the door, he doesn't just see the plains and the prairies of beautiful Israel. 
Instead, he sees thousands of enemy troops waiting to capture and kill him. Imagine that's you. Imagine the fury that somebody would want to attack you, but also the, the like anxiety of not knowing how you'll get out of it. Some of you might be in a position like that right now. The enemies attacked you and you're frustrated and you're angry, you're full of rage, but you're also worried because you don't know how you'll overcome it. That's what the servant is feeling in this moment. And he turns to Elisha and the Bible doesn't even say that Elisha walked to the door to see the army as well. Elisha, cool, calm, collected, just says, you know what? Trust me, there's more fighting for us than there is fighting against us. Another scripture in the Bible, I'm sure you know it. Greater is he who is in me, who is in you, than he that is in the world. Elisha, thousands of years before Jesus proclaimed that, goes to his servant and just prays, God, open his eyes that he might see what's really going on. There's a spiritual truth, a principle, a foundational principle that we need to latch onto here. It's all throughout the scripture, but it's also helpful for us to understand the world around us. And that foundational, foundational truth, sorry, is this, that there's more going on behind the scenes. That what you see in the physical is always backed by something going on in the spiritual. There's more going on than what meets the eye. And thousands of years later, the Apostle Paul declares this in Ephesians chapter 6 on that same theme. So from 2 Kings 6 all the way to the right in your Bible to Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul says this, For our struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There's always something more happening than what meets the eye. I want you to know that in 2020, from Australia being on fire to different countries experiencing unrest, to COVID-19, to mass killings around our planet, to racial oppression that is now arising in continents and countries all over the world in a new way. I want you to know that through all of it, there is something happening in the spiritual realm that we won't see unless we ask God to open the eyes of our heart. One of the most dangerous things you can do wherever you're at is believe that what's happening in the physical is all that there is. Are you hearing me tonight? The most dangerous thing you can do is look at the problems in your life and say, ah, there's nothing more than just this problem. The Apostle Paul and the prophet Elisha, they both said that there is something in the spiritual realm that is driving what we experience in the physical realm. I want to tell you tonight that there are spirits that are at work to influence you in a demonic way. There is a devil, yes, but there are spirits that that devil has all throughout this world that are trying to influence you and oppress you and to get you off your path and trajectory of where God's calling you. There are spirits of addiction, spirits of anxiety, spirits of sexuality, spirits of depression, spirits of anger, spirits of lying. There is a devil who wants to attack you and there are spirits that are in a spiritual realm that are trying to influence you and the world we live in. I often tell my students here at my youth group, you know, don't just focus on, let's say, the bully, for instance. Don't just focus on the person who is bullying you and, and cutting you down and saying things about you. Take a moment to understand that our battle is not flesh and blood, but it's against powers and principalities. There's something that drives that bully. There's a deep longing inside of them maybe to be accepted, for them to be loved. I mean, you don't know what happened at that bully's home or what's happening in that bully's parents' marriage or even if they have parents or even if their parents are married or happily married. You don't know any of those factors. So what you need to do, even though you are the victim in this situation, is understand that first, you're a child of God, that God is your father and he's going to protect you. But number two, that there's more to the situation than what meets the eye. 
And once you understand that there's something happened in a spiritual realm, you understand that the answer to this problem is not a physical answer, but a spiritual one. You see too many young people, old people alike, but especially young people in these formative years, too many young people try to solve physical problems with physical answers. They try to meet physical needs by physical solutions, and, and that more than likely turns out to be substance abuse. It turns out to be some crooked way of experiencing sexuality and sexual relationships. It turns into finding intimacy in ways that God never planned on you to find intimacy in. If we only try to find physical solutions, we will always fall short. But if we understand that there's more than what meets the eye, we can begin to tap into the heart of God and find the spiritual solution that actually solves the problem. I mean, think about it. How cruel would it be if Jesus left us here fighting a flesh and blood war without a flesh and blood savior? How cruel would that be if our battle was flesh and blood? It was just physical, but we didn't have a physical God here. You see, because our battle is spiritual, he gave us his Holy Spirit. So that when we feel like we have nowhere else to turn, there's still always somewhere else left to turn. Think about Elisha's servant. Think about how hopeless he must have felt. There's a physical army there ready to take physical action. Elisha turns to his servant and he says, God, open his eyes to see what's really going on. In that same book of Ephesians where the Apostle Paul spoke about our flesh and blood battle being just what meets the eye, but there being more than that battle happening, the Apostle Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. You see, the Apostle Paul said that the only way we can tap into this physical battle is to have the eyes of our heart opened. And I just, I just want to preach and declare and warn you to take time wherever you are tonight to ask God to open the eyes of your heart. Because for the rest of your life, I, I hate to break it to you. I hate to be this guy. All the way in Canada, I guess you can't get mad at me. You could send me a message, but I, I won't read it if I know you're mad at me. But I hate to be the guy to break it to you, but for the rest of your life, you're going to have struggles. You're going to have attacks by the enemy. You're going to get into relationships that crumble apart. You're going to attach yourself to people who detach themselves from you when they find it convenient. You're going to have problems at work. You're going to have problems with friends. You're going to have problems on teams. You're going to have problems in marriage. It's just the way the world goes. We're fallen people. And if we don't ask God to open the eyes of our heart, we run the risk of never finding the solution that actually satisfies. If we don't ask God to open the eyes of our heart, we'll open the front door to every problem that we have and we'll just see the armies there without seeing the greater army that is on the mountains around them. I find such comfort in this story because it really is adjustable to any season of life that I'm in. I just take that army, the army of Aram, and I just put a different label on it. I put, I put, you know, like, I put bullying on that army. I put, um, relational conflict on that army. I put insecurity and anxiety and depression and doubt on that army. And then I just put myself in the servant's eyes after Elisha's prayed. And after asking God to open the eyes of my heart, I open my eyes again and I have this fresh peace. This peace that Jesus said was available for you and available for me. 
I have peace because I look above depression and I look above anxiety. I look above um, friendship conflict and I can see that on top of the thousands of the physical army, there's tens of thousands of a spiritual army on my side. There's more fighting for you than there is fighting against you. Grab onto that tonight. Know that in faith, we can stand here victorious, knowing that even though in the physical realm, life doesn't look good, I know that the truth in the spiritual realm is that I'm going to be okay. And hasn't 2020 been the biggest army of Aram you've ever come against? I'm over here in Canada, but life isn't all too different than what you might assume. I mean, we turn on the TV every day and it's like there's a new set of rules from the government. You know, one day they're saying, don't wear masks. Masks are bad for you. And the next day they're saying, please wear a mask. You got to save everyone else's life. One morning they're saying, you can go shopping. It's okay. The malls are open. The beaches are open. Have fun. And then the next day, 24 hours, it's like, don't leave your home or else you will die. It's like, who do I believe? Where do I run to? Who do I trust to help coach me along in life? Life's been crazy. I've seen lots of things happening in countries around the world. Like I mentioned earlier, all of Australia was on fire to start this year. In North America, where I live, it's like all of a sudden, there's all of these brutalities being reported on the news. There's young men and women being killed in, in the most gruesome way. And there's such unrighteousness being portrayed through our television screens. And it seems like, it seems like people are growing desensitized to it because they believe that this physical battle, which is being repeated over and over again, is all that there is. And they don't see that driving every, every attack on humanity, every bit of racial oppression, every bit of disease and sickness is a spiritual entity, is a spiritual force seeking to oppress and to um, influence us. And my prayer has just been for these last couple of months, God, open the eyes of my heart to not just see the truth found in your word, but to also see that there's more on my side than those who are fighting against me. Open my eyes to see, God, what you're doing in this season. I mean, one of, one of the scariest things that could happen to the church in the world during this season is for us not to ask that question. God, what are you doing in the midst of COVID? What are you doing in the midst of hatred? What are you doing in the midst of all of this conflict in our world? You know, there's people that are actually living their lives and they're asking themselves every day, how do I get through another day? How do I just stay safe through this pandemic? And they're totally missing the point that Jesus said, first of all, like I mentioned, he called it, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. They miss that. And they think, well, Jesus couldn't have seen this happen. He couldn't have called something like coronavirus. He couldn't have, you know, called something like, well, you fill in the blank. But because Jesus is sovereign and he's faithful enough to bring us this far, because he knew all this would happen, we can rest in that. We can take peace from that. But we can also stand above that army attacking us and say, I'm partnering with what's happening in the spiritual realm. God, what are you calling me to do? God, what are you doing in the earth today? So I want to leave you with, with that story as our backdrop and with faithfulness and sovereignty of God in full view. I want to leave you with three things that will happen if you make the decision tonight to ask God to open the eyes of your heart, I want to tell you three things that will happen when you ask God to open your heart. Number one, when you ask God to open the eyes of your heart, we'll be able to make sense of the world around us. And I've been kind of hinting at that theme already. But imagine you could wake up tomorrow and where you've had confusion, you can have clarity. Imagine getting up tomorrow and instead of falling into that same unease and anxious feeling that you might have had these past couple of months, imagine waking up and just resting in peace knowing that I can understand a little bit of this because I know it's not physical and I know it's spiritual. I have a greater understanding of what's going on around us. You see, the Bible says 
that the earth is groaning, that all of creation is in this state of waiting, just longing for the sons and daughters of God to arise to their rightful place to take what is rightfully ours and to lead the charge all around us with bold assurance that we are children of God. But too many Christians are living in anxiety and they're not leading the charge because they can barely lead themselves. But imagine you wake up tomorrow and you have an understanding of what the world around us is really, really happening or what it's really like, sorry. When you ask God to open the eyes of our heart, to ask God to open the eyes of your heart. You'll have a greater understanding and you'll be able to make sense of the world all around us. Here's the second thing. When you ask God to open the eyes of your heart, you'll be able to see people like Jesus sees people. Now, this is huge. Because the moment that you accept the physical for being all that's there, you begin to label people and to write people off. When someone offends you, you just say, well, well, that person has a rebellious, uh, rebellious character. I don't want anything to do with them. And you give up on them. When you try to, you know, plow through at that job, but you just can't quite get there. You just kind of write it off. Like maybe it's not just for me, but there are people you encounter every day and they are waiting for you to not only understand the world we're living in, but to see them for who they really are, not for the problem that's arisen in their life or for the problem that they've been to you. See, God wants us to have the compassion of Jesus Christ. He wants us to see what's really going on and to hear what's really being said. There are people that are in your life right now that may be a pain to you. They may be a thorn in your side, like the Apostle Paul said, but God is waiting for you to restore identity into them, to call them for who they really are and for who Jesus sees them to be to pull them up past that problem and to give them the identity that Christ has given them. When we open the eyes of our heart, we can see people for how Jesus sees people. And here's the third thing. When you ask God to open the eyes of your heart, we'll be able to partner with what God is doing now. This is huge. I don't want to just pray that God keeps me safe another day. I hope he does, but I don't want that to be the extent of my prayer life. I don't want to just pray for blessings in life, although I do want blessings in life. I don't want to just pray for God to meet, you know, X need or this need or whatever. I want my prayer life to be so much more in depth that I can ask God what's happening in the world today and then I can pray into that specifically. I mean, think about it. When's the last time you prayed specifically for something that God was doing here and now and you prayed until you saw it through? I want my prayer life to be so in depth and I want to be so given to the voice of God, just like the prophet Elisha, that I know when the enemy's attacking and exactly where the enemy's attacking. Broad prayers are good, but broad prayers, generic prayers, get generic answers. Let me ask you this question. My lead pastor, Pastor Matt, asks me this all the time. He says, if God answered your prayer, would you know it? If God answered the prayers that you're praying right now, would you know it? Because that's how laser focused we need to be. When we ask God to open the eyes of our heart, we will be able to see what God is doing in the world here and now. And we can partner with that through prayer. We can pray for specific things to be answered and we'll know without the shadow of a doubt that they're answered when they are. Generic prayers get generic answers. So ask yourself that question, would I know if God answered my prayers? Young person, I want to encourage you that even though life seems dark, God has put something in you and he's given you the authority by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's given you grace to move forward and to overcome. He's giving you the ability in this moment, as I declare the word of the Lord to you, to not just see the armies that are all around, but to actually see the chariots of fire that are on the mountaintops, to see the multiplied tens of thousands of those who are on your side, not those who are just against you. I want you to know that if you make the commitment to stop in a crazy world, 
and to just say, God, open the eyes of my heart. He's going to invite you in on a deeper level and your relationship with God will not just however you're feeling it is. And for me, some days it just feels like it's just like going down and down and down and down. It's this slow descent from the moment I got saved. Your relationship with God won't be like that. It'll actually take a sharp turn and it will be like climbing a mountain. It'll be like every day climbing the mountain of the Lord. Each day you're closer than you were the day before that. It won't be like you're trudging through life, but it'll be excitement. It will be the feeling of a great journey, a great adventure. But first you have to make the decision to look past what you see in the physical and to grab a hold of what's happening in the supernatural, in the spiritual. It starts with you just saying, God, open the eyes of my heart. Tonight, Father, I pray for every person watching this stream, for every person that is going to see this stream, that you would open the eyes of their heart, that they would see in the spiritual, not just the physical. I ask Holy Spirit that you would come and there would be a deeper intimacy that is cultivated in this moment. We declare that we don't want to be the generation who just go through life as usual, who look for physical solutions to physical problems, but we declare right now that we're going to be the generation that seeks your face that draws closer to you every single day. Holy Spirit, help us right now to seek after you and to follow your voice. I pray, God, that we would be able to understand the times and seasons of which we were were living in. I pray that we'd be able to see people like you see them, Jesus, that we'd restore identity to a hurting world. And I ask, Father, that we would have the ability to pray laser-focused prayers that get specific answers. We are your prophets, so speak to us, God, today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Uh, I'm so honored that I got to preach the word of God to you. I want you to know that we love you. My wife and I, our family, is praying for you, and we long for the moment that we'll get to be together in person again. But I just bless you in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is right where you are right now. And if you would pray that prayer, he would come on in and you would experience a deeper intimacy that you might not have even known was possible. I love you guys lots. I'm gonna turn it back to your pastors, but have an amazing weekend and God bless you guys. Hey family, I wanna encourage you to follow us on Facebook and on Instagram at Hill City Cape Town uh, and on YouTube, Hill City Cape Town. And on SoundCloud, you can access all our materials, all the preaching, all the the songs that our our youth ministry has done. And our our different encouraging posts will be on there. But please follow, like, share, do what you need to. and, And so that we can interact and engage with one another and be a blessing to you as a youth ministry. Do it right now. Tag your friends. Share it with them. And we know that you'll be blessed by the content we post. Thank you for those that follow and like us already. But to those that haven't uh, clicked that buttons yet, do it now. God bless you.